I'm Randy Reynolds, and I'm the producer of Hardly Sound. Uh, my name is Chris Kim. I am the writer, director, narrator, and editor and camera operator of Hardly Sound. Uh, my name is Randall. I am officially the social media manager, which is a made-up title. Um, my name is Adam Hilton. I, uh, what was the second question? <laughs> I um, run some of the uh, in-studio sessions and uh, I'm doing some of the mastering engineering. You and I were already doing a web series at the time, and we had already decided that we were going to do this with the bye bye. And then it just turned out that the show was picked up, and they were going to be the first episode. We all looked like so happy all the time and you don't think about like how much fun you're having for me at least i don't think about like how, how fun it is and how happy i am when i'm doing these things and we see it and like everyone's just smiling the whole movie yeah. or the whole tv show i felt just like i looked like a surgeon who was about to lose his patient <laughs> <laughs> i know when we're like all playing and practicing and recording it's like all i focus on is mistakes you know like mistakes i'm making just trying to make everything better, and I kind of didn't focus on any of that while I was watching the show. We got in a fight. He was defending a lady. He's an honorable man. Gotta say the best is when Jeff's describing the the two hats. When I first when I first started like, after my punk rock bands, when I first started doing the solo shit, I would go play open mics in Dallas. I would wear two hats. Like, like Sherlock Holmes. Like in a different to, in different no, directions. Because you not, because the acoustics, if you cup a hat around each ear, you hear yourself oh, way better. Come <laughs> and then Zach goes, Hey, who's that dude Ooh. with the two hats? Who's that? <laughs> I mean, to have even usable recordings out of it is like a bonus. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Adam, Adam Hilton at Shine Studios. Yeah. yeah God rest real. his soul. Thanks, Adam. Is he dead? <laughs> 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 I really worked, I guess, closest with the by and by on that first episode. Uh, and really had a lot of fun working with those guys. They're a, a very young energy. You know, I was like, um, yeah, I think I'll track this to tape. Like, why not? And uh, Jeff joked with me. He's like, so you're gonna, you're gonna track this to two inch? And I was like, and not knowing that I was gonna do that. And I was like, yeah, I think so. And he's like, are you serious? And I was just like, so blown away by that you know, joy at getting to work with this kind of media. Gosh, they were just as nice and as open and as happy and grateful and gracious as they could be. Thank you guys, man. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much. Super Chris. Thanks. We, Randy, I think, we love what you guys are doing more than that we're a part of it, so. The first episode with the by and by, like, when I first watched it, when Jeff was talking about his friend dying and the influence that had on him, I'm not superstitious at all, but I remember sensing it, sensing it before it happened. Yeah. The whole processing Brandon's death was kind of like what got me back into music and songwriting. And then the whole arc of that episode coming to Saving the Turtle and the way that you you wrote that piece. It's when she oh, yeah. you got it. was <laughs> From uh. Is he under? But man, you and Jeff saved a turtle. That's good enough for today. Definitely like what I point to is like this is what this show can do and this is the the kind of stories that kind of set it apart from other just music documentaries was at the time when you had decided that we were going to take what we were doing in the web series to a new kind of place, a much more personal place, a place where we talk about what we think and the experiences that we have with these people. I don't exaggerate when I say filmmaking or any act of creation can and often is agonizing and takes over your mind and sometimes makes you say horrible things to the people you love. Why demand so much of yourself? Because 
of this. I think it's a. Uh, I feel like it's been a trend for a while in a lot of documentary filmmaking, the removing of the self and removing of the self and being very journalistic, which there's plenty of value to that, but it's refreshing to get to see the, the you know, auteur aspect, the fingerprint of the creators. I'm basically another character in the story, and whereas the characters that, you know, the subjects that we encounter, I can't control their storylines, I can control mine. Like putting myself in there is actually just another tool. It's like I've added a character that I could then mold uh, freely. I also wanted to make the show as human and personal as possible, and this was one way of doing that. At the end of the day, um, this is about people. It's not about music, per se. You and Randy have both done a great job of forming these unexpected narratives, which I think is really the strength of the show, is that it's awesome to get to experience and see these bands that you might not know anything about or whose music you might not have been exposed to. That's awesome, and I love the, the archival aspect of it and the history and the, um, the, the artifactness of it, but the really beautiful thing, the real thing that really sets it over the edge for me is the fact that there is deep insight on the part of the creators, and it's not just about the band and the artists, it's in and of itself a unique and really lovely work of art. The Royal Force episode of the airport is one of my favorites, and so it was just exciting being out there on the runway. I don't, I don't like to fly, so you had to get in the plane. I mean, there's no reason for me to be in that plane anyway, but still. We had walkie-talkies, which was fun. Uh, they served no purpose whatsoever except for us to goof off. The British label Mollusk Records that's uh, going to put out our record. Uh, thanks to you, Captain. Uh, it kind of turned out better than a lot of the stuff we recorded in the studio. I I think I shed a, a tear or two in the Royal Forest episode uh, in the end monologue when you're talking about your parents and I I, I it hit pretty hard. That was a really beautiful narrative. I imagine she leans in close to his face, her eyes shining with hopeful tears. Let's just do it, she says. Let's just do it and see what happens. I feel like that was sort of really, for us, like where we really started to understand the possibilities for, for the show. Like the Royal Forest episode to me really kind of sums up what the show is about. Whatever bitterness I might have felt towards my parents at any point, I mean, that's gone now. Like it doesn't matter. Um, they tried. You know, they moved to this country when they were younger than I am now and started a new life, and that's extraordinary. And, and you know, I would rather honor that and talk about that than say, oh man, I can't believe I had to grow up in this culture that, you know, I don't fit in anywhere, blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah, that, that's a part of my life, but it's no longer the focus of my life like it used to be. I think maybe it resonated with me because I know Justin and I know that studio and I, there's a personal aspect of it there for me for sure. But it, again, it speaks to the strength of the creators and the show itself in that it illuminated and gave insight to something that even though it's an intimate part of my own life, I didn't see. That's art. I don't know, I don't know what I was worried about. It was just like, ah, like, totally vulnerable. And then like once I saw it, I was like, oh, this is amazing, this is great. It was good, it opened up a conversation between my mother and I because there was like a focus on my dad's dads and she was just curious as to why that was. And I've been wanting that to happen, so that was like my probably my favorite part, I guess. It was like harder to say, say the thing like to somebody <clears throat> in a conversation form, I guess it was for some reason easier just to tell everybody. <laughs> you know, what I never wanted to do was make it um, a show that's only about like surface level stuff like here is the band and here's who they've played with and here's who they are going to play with and here's who they've recorded with like honestly those details interest some people but they don't interest me what I care about is like okay like um, how did this person end up the way they are you know what was it like when they were younger and this kind of creative person like what was that experience like because 
Uh, that's what I relate to, and I think that's what a lot of other people relate to, too. And these are things that everybody goes through. Life, death, love, romance, art. The philosophy of the show has always been to make it as human and personal as possible, make it about the people. But the most important thing about the show is that uh, it's stories, and it's, it's, the music is like um, a byproduct of that. When you called me to tell me that we were going to be on TV, my girlfriend Alex was literally in a coma. <laughs> so that was, uh, I remember that moment very distinctly because um, when you told me, I didn't feel anything. And it wasn't like I felt bitter that this was happening now instead of at a more peaceful time in my life. It wasn't that I felt, you know, joy, but I was suppressing it. I literally felt nothing because like every emotion that I had every emotion, all my emotional energy was laser focused on, you know, this one event in my life. I had, I was just wrapping up the by and by episode, the first episode when I got that phone call. And um, I almost went home that night, and actually I did. I went home that night and I rewrote the whole ending to be about Alex and this accident and this experience that I was going through. I realized that, you know, not enough time has passed. I, I haven't processed this completely yet, so I just let it be. There was some part when we were doing the Bad Lovers episode, my dad passed away. And Chris, well, Chris's girlfriend had gotten in a really bad car accident. And uh, Chris, it brought Chris and I really close together. I miss my dad and I feel like my dad would be proud of what I'm doing. And not only with my wife and with, with the house and stuff, but with the show. My dad was a music lover and I didn't find that out until probably the last 10 years. When I see someone like Ralph White, I, when we're doing, when we're filming that stuff, I'm like, my dad would just love this man. When him and Will sat down and did that piece, my dad would have like flipped out. He would have just loved it. You know? So there's been times throughout the process of us making this show where I think about my dad. And I realize that everybody goes to this stuff and I realize that everybody, you know, and that's, what's, that's what just keeps bringing me back to this, this, this whole thing that we're doing. It's like, Yes, people do get in accidents, and yes, people do pass away, and, and but there's like, the more I we talk to these people, the more I realize there's just so much more life around than than you can understand, and so like being around these people like really inspires me because it's just like there's so much life in people. Yeah, I think um, having dealt with that uh, really affected how I approached the show and just sort of the philosophy of the show. There was an absolute point where this could have just not happened. Even though all this stuff was going on, we kept working and we kept filming and we kept talking to other people. And I feel like that helped us kind of heal. This has been a good year. <laughs> My New Year's resolution, I suppose, is to be more patient. Most cliche <laughs> question. Uh, my resolution is just to be a better person. I want to follow through more and do more of the things that I say I'm going to do. Yeah, I think I'm really optimistic about next year, which is rare for me because I'm not optimistic. Set some goals for some like larger traveling trips maybe move a little slower. I think just broadly being better about keeping good habits. I want to get out of the restaurant industry and uh, start working in a field that I'm going to school for, so, which is audio production. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have any personal goals. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't do that kind of thing to tell the truth, you know. I think if you're going to make a re resolution, it should just be a resolution. It didn't have to, you know, to, as far as I'm concerned, it's a new year every day, you know. I am going to learn how to refurbish furniture. <laughs>